Hi and welcome to the tutorial on concept maps. I'm Susan Zabacek, Senior Director of CTELT at Fort Hayes State University and this is the first in a series of two tutorials about concept maps. On this first page we see a concept map about concept maps and this particular one was created by the folks at the Institute for Human and Machine Cognition. They've done a lot of work on concept mapping to, to help with learning and in fact have developed some software that you can download for free called CMAP Tools. The link to get to that will be included at the end of this presentation. What I'd like you to notice in this particular concept map is the networked structure. So our particular topic is concept maps and we have a variety of topics or points about that, so organized knowledge, effective teaching, focus questions, interrelationships, and each of those is connected to one or more other concepts with a link and a label that shows what that relationship is. This is especially important with learning to focus on these links and identifying those relationships so that we aren't simply asking students to generate a bunch of keywords or topics, but that they really understand how those ideas fit together. So what is a concept map? You've seen one example. The idea here is that it's a visual representation of our own cognitive knowledge structures. In other words, we organize information for ourselves in a vast network structure in our brains. These structures are called schemata. And what we're doing when we're creating a concept map is we're trying to mimic how we have information organized for ourselves in our brain. Asking our students to do that is an extremely beneficial learning exercise. A concept map is analogous to a flowchart, but one that's highly branched and not linear. So if that image kind of makes sense to you, you can think about um, something like a flowchart, but less linear. And finally, when we're using concept maps for teaching, we might think of them as a scaffold or a template to help our students build understanding for themselves. Again, we're trying to create a visual representation that mimics our own thinking. And so what we're asking students to do when we ask them to create concept maps is think about their own thinking. In other words, metacognition. Doing this reinforces those particular concepts as well as the relationships among them. Let's look at some examples of concept maps. This first one is a very simple one that I have created, in fact, using CMAP tools. And this is about the visible spectrum. So here's my main topic, visible spectrum. And I've simply generated a few uh, topics or concepts about that. So the range within the electromagnetic sp magnetic spectrum that can be seen by humans, um, colors, wavelength, Isaac Newton, these are all important concepts related to the visible spectrum. So once I generated all of those, then what I did was simply sit down and organize the particular concepts and link them together. So visible spectrum, is related to electromagnetic spectrum. I knew that. I had to determine what this relationship was. So it's a subset of the electromagnetic spectrum. The visible spectrum and colors are related and the relationship is that the visible spectrum is manifested as colors. Colors can be divided into red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet. So the idea here is that we generate the concepts, organize them, link them together, and then identify what those relationships are for each of those links. 
If you're familiar with mind mapping, this might look somewhat familiar, except that with concept mapping, there's a very strong emphasis on identifying these linking relationships, which we typically don't see in other activities um, like concept mapping. For example, mind mapping. The emphasis, emphasis is not so much on the relationships among concepts. Here's an example from 21st century schools, and I particularly like this one, not only because it's a clever topic, superheroes, but the students who created this one used color to help organize their ideas. This is a fairly robust map, and again, what we're seeing are the concepts and then the relationships here, and you'll notice that the links between concepts typically will create a phrase or a sentence. For example, superheroes possess powers. Their powers are based on superhuman characteristics, for example. So this particular example, like I said, is fairly robust, but I also like the uh, use of color. This particular map is a good example of a way to use concept mapping for assessment in order to identify places where a student either misunderstands something, for example, they may have a misconception, or they're fuzzy on the relationships among particular concepts, and maybe they have trouble articulating their own thinking about this. So for example, this particular student knows that blood is made of cells and somehow red cells, white cells, and platelets are involved but not really sure on the relationship and not really clear on the relationship between platelets and clotting. So as an instructor, having students create a concept map will enable you to see where your students are struggling, where there are gaps in their knowledge, or where they have misconceptions. This particular concept map is on a very complicated topic on uh, nuclear imaging for uh, cardiology. The nice thing here is the clarity of the relationships and the links. So when we see ejection fraction might be high, which often indicates normal global function. So we're seeing a very clear sense of what the relationships are between the particular concepts that have been generated here. So if you're thinking, to, if you were thinking to yourself, concept maps are fine for for areas that aren't particularly complicated. This is a really wonderful example of being able to demonstrate through a concept map how information that's actually fairly complicated but can still be represented in this visual format. So what about concept maps and learning? One thing that's really beneficial with concept maps for student use is that it helps the students to focus on the key ideas and to ignore the irrelevant data. This is a way to reduce cognitive load so they're not overwhelmed. And the idea here is that as students generate concepts related to the topic or the, the focus question, as they begin to organize those, what they'll need to do is identify which concepts are relevant and which are not. And this is a particularly helpful exercise for your students to do individually or in small groups, or you can even do this as an entire class activity. Using concept maps um, appears to enable more rapid retrieval of information. And we think that based on the uh, research results out there, but that's because as you create a concept map, one thing that you are doing is reinforcing um, and clarifying for yourself how you have information organized. And as you do that, you are reinforcing those relationships and those links among concepts. And every time 
you go over those in your head, you retrieve that information, you're strengthening the links between concepts. What that does is it speeds up the, the path that we have to take to get a particular piece of information. And so it's kind of like building out an extremely complicated highway system. Every time we uh, go back and think about those concepts um, and, and retrieve those and relate them to something else and think about those as a way to articulate our concept maps, again, we're reinforcing and strengthening those relationships, which speeds up that retrieval. And using concept maps over time appears to show uh, greater clarity in thinking, again, because we've had to articulate our own understanding. It's a, almost a cliche of teaching that you really understand something the first time you have to teach it to someone else. That's partially because in order to teach something, you have to have it clear enough in your head that you can explain it. Concept maps require some of the same activities in that you've got to articulate your thinking and clarify the relationships among ideas. This also results in more densely networked ideas and more densely networked and robust maps the more you practice making concept maps. So what would we do as an instructor? Well, first, you would probably want to um, have your students exposed to concept maps to a variety of them and probably generate the concepts as a large group. You could always have them generate concepts individually, but initially it's probably a good idea to do this as a group activity. You could even do this as um, a small group activity in the online environment as well. You can introduce concept maps again by showing different examples. You could provide a template. Um, you can assign the label. You can, excuse me, you can uh, have small groups come up with the labels, the relationships, or you can provide lists of key concepts and have the students organize those. As students get better at creating maps, it's an excellent activity if they've created a map to have them explain it to someone else. Again, the idea here is that they really understand that concept when they can articulate it well enough to explain it to someone else. The other thing this requires is that as, as they create that or rather as they explain that map it'll become clear to them if they've left something out or weren't particularly clear on one of the links within their map. So here is the link for CMAP tools. If you are interested in other options, there are a couple of uh, packages that are very popular. One is uh, probably the most popular is called Inspiration. Um, that's available for purchase. Another one is called Mind Manager. I would suggest giving CMAP a look and deciding if you're happy with it or not. If you want more features and something that's more robust, you can always purchase one of the other packages. Here are some uh, references about concept mapping in case you were interested in exploring the uh, research behind this. In the next tutorial uh, of these two, we're actually going to go through the process of creating a concept map and look at how would you actually create a map around a particular topic and look at those particular steps. So if you're interested in that, look for the next concept map tutorial in this series. Thanks.